We're going to talk about how to solve an equation when there are variables on both sides. When we solve linear equations with variables on both sides, our first step is to simplify each side of the equation. We know that this equal sign splits our equation into two equivalent expressions, so we want the left side to be simplified and the right side to be as simplified as possible. So we might distribute, combine like terms, things like that. Once we're all simplified, then we use inverse operations to get all variable terms on the same side. So we want to collect all our x's on one side or the other. It doesn't actually matter. And then our last step is to just solve like we've been solving and isolate our variable. So let's see some examples. In our first example, that equal sign splits our equation into two sides, the left side and the right side. On the left side, we want to see if we can simplify anything. Well, there's nothing we can distribute or combine, so let's check the right side. Nothing we can distribute or combine. So we get to move on to step two, which was get all of our variable terms on the same side. I'm going to take this 3x, I need to pick this entire term up and move it over here to collect all the x's together. Well, since this is a positive 3x, we're going to subtract 3x from both sides. So 5x minus 3x gives us 2x. We still have a negative 4 on that side. 3x minus 3x is 0, and we still have a plus 12. So 0 plus 12 is 12. Now we move on to step 3, which says isolate the variable. So we want to essentially undo order of operations to get x by itself. So we add 4 to both sides. 2x is left over here, negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so we cancel that out. 12 plus 4 is 16. Now we see that x is connected to this 2 using multiplication. To undo that, we do the inverse, which is division. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. 2x divided by 2 is 1x. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So our final answer would be x equals 8. Let's take a look at a second example. In our second example, we can see that we don't have simplified sides. So on the left side, this says 2 times that quantity, so we're actually going to distribute our 2. 2 times 4x gives us 8x. 2 times 2 gives us 4. On the right side, this says 4x minus 12 times the quantity x minus 1. This is really like having plus a negative 12. So again, we can distribute this negative 12 into our parentheses. So 4x is still here. We get minus 12x, and then negative 12 times a negative 1 is a positive 12. Remember to look at your signs because this is a really common error is to forget to distribute the negative to a negative. So the left side is still simplified, so I'm just going to rewrite it. But the right side, we can combine these like terms. 4x minus 12x is negative 8x, and then we have plus 12. So step one is done. We've simplified the left, we've simplified the right. Step two says get all of your variable terms on the same side. Well, I'm just going to put them on the left, so I see a negative 8x, so I need to add positive 8x. On the left side, 8x plus 8x is 16x, 4 plus 0 is 4. On the right side, negative 8x plus 8x is 0, plus 12 is 12. On to step 3, we're going to get x all by its lonesome. So we are going to remove this term, subtract 4, over to the other side. We get 16x, 4 minus 4 is 0, 12 minus 4 is 8. 16 times x, to undo that, we divide both sides by 16. 16x over 16 is 1x. 8 over 16 is not 2, it is 1 half. So again, we've isolated our variable, so that would be our final answer. So now the last thing we want to talk about are some special cases. So we start this problem like normal, simplify each side of our equation. So we're going to distribute this 3 on the left side. We get 15x plus 6 equals 15x. 
Step two says get all of your variable terms together. Okay, I'm going to put these guys over there. So we subtract 15x from both sides. 15x minus 15x is 0, plus 6 is just 6. And then 15x minus 15x is 0. Well, time out. All of our variables have canceled out. However, we get a statement that says 6 is the same thing as 0, which is not true. So when we end up with a statement that's false, that means we have no real solutions. So it doesn't matter what x is. There is never going to be a value that would make this original equation true. Now let's look at what happens if we have infinitely many solutions. We're going to start this one the same way. Simplify each side. So we get negative 8y minus 2 on the left, and the right side is also negative 8y minus 2. So right away, we should notice the left side and the right side are exactly the same thing. So if I collect all my variable terms, add 8y to both sides, negative 8y plus 8y is 0, minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 8y plus 8y is 0, minus 2 is negative 2. Well again, all of our variables canceled out, but we were left with the statement that this time is true. Negative 2 is in fact equal to negative 2. When you end up with something like this, you have infinitely many solutions because it doesn't matter what x is since it's the exact same thing on both sides, which we could actually see right here at this step. It doesn't matter what y is, it's always going to give you the same thing on the left and on the right. You will always end up with a true statement. And that's solving equations with variables on both sides.